welcome to tonight's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have cartoon or cartoon comic book artist. I guess you've driven, you've drawn some cartoons. I've drawn cartoons, yes, 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 yes. Rodney Fike. Um, he's I've I did not realize up until relatively recently how long I've known you. I know, isn't that crazy? Yes. <laughs> so, um, Rodney, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, well, hi everybody. I'm Rodney Fike. Uh, I have been in and out of the independent comic business for the better part of thirty years. Um, started with. Uh, uh, company Imaginus Productions, which was our company. We did a uh, black and white superhero book called The Superior Seven. Uh, we published five issues of that. Um, we did probably nine, but only published five. Uh, and then we got into the coloring game and we colored comics for other people for about seven years. Um, and then everybody did the grown up thing and got married and moved apart. And uh, I uh, went and got the dreaded day job. Um, ended up landing a role on as an inking assistant on GI Joe for a year, um, and then worked at a, in a factory for about nine years until I blew up my back, <laughs> and then uh, which was kind of a, a blessing and a curse because it got me back into drawing because I couldn't do anything while I was healing um, after my surgery, and that's when I met my wife Tina, and uh, gradually I was telling her about my heyday back in the nineties. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we gradually got back into the comic business. We formed Hazard Productions in 2009 and we launched with, uh, Peanut Pudding and Jelly, which was our flagship title at the time. It was a semi-autobiographical book about my brother and sister and I as kids, believing that we were actually superheroes and it chronicles the tales of that. Uh, we did six issues of that. We have a trade, uh, compiling the first four issues. And then floppies of issues five and six. And we also have, as you can see in the background there, Roadkill Rampage, which we will be launching a Kickstarter for issue two on October 20th. Um, and we also have Pitter Patter, which we just, we are currently fulfilling the Kickstarter on issues one and two of that. We've got them in the mail. We're putting together the packages. So those will be going out very soon. Um, and in between, I've done various other things. I also have a, a, a book called Unchained. It was a one shot that we did. Um, and we, we re-released it with an additional backup story in that. So that's available, but it's just a one shot. It's not going to, it's not an ongoing thing. Um, so yeah, so that's what I do. I do all various kinds of freelance work, uh, inking work for folks, um, coloring work. Uh, just, you know, I'm constantly dabbling. Yeah. Like I said, we were joking, we were talking about that. I was like, you have one of my fan letters that I wrote. Yes. I loved Superior 7 when, <laughs> when I was, uh, I, I would say we won't put, I was, I was 17 maybe when I, when I found that and, and, yeah. 17 and I, I fell in love with that. I used to run into you guys at, I think either the jubilee shows or um the shows over in indianapolis and down to yeah. Cincinnati and stuff Ass and shows every show i do is i pick up a new issue i have yeah. all of them i have yes. like one through four now that you tell me that that there exists a, a, a six seven eight and nine somehow well in, in various stages of various production stages. <laughs> that makes me want to go who has those and can you get me digital copies <laughs> so okay, well I, let me tell you this. Uh, let, let me tell you the tale of woe um, to a certain point. Um, uh, well, Dion left. Dion Knuckles left to go pursue um, other other aspirations, and we were going to do replace Dion with Greg Land. And Greg Land actually did issue six, and I have the completed thumbnails, and I have seventeen pages penciled and inked. Um. But then he got hired by CrossGen. So, um, and it was sudden. And, and uh, which we were kind of cheesed off about. So uh, he left suddenly. And uh, it, I don't want to say it was a bad break, but it, it, um, we ended up not being able to publish the book. Ooh. So, um, so there was, that was issue six. 
and then uh, we did the Savage Dragon crossover that actually got done, and Dion Dion did the artwork for it. Um, but there were some discrepancies in the script. He didn't follow the script, or I don't remember exactly what the detail was. So we had a second artist, Matthew Martin, redraw it. Uh, and then our financing fell through. Uh, we had a, a backer that was going to back us, and then that fell through. Um, so we couldn't go. We couldn't go through with publishing it. So in the meantime, while we were producing the Savage Dragon crossover, I was trying to find people to replace Greg, and I would get you know six pages of a story here and six pages of a story there, and never, never found that one consistent person that was of the quality or level that I was looking for to continue on with the book. And then we started getting a lot of work coloring. And, and so we were making more money coloring than we were producing books. So we just started coloring. And then we got a client out that was based in Pasadena um, called AOCOM, Alpha Omega Communications. And it was a religious book. It was all about, the, uh, it was called Angel Wars. And we worked with him exclusively for three years. Um, he wrote the books. We developed the characters. Uh, we worked with Clint Helensky, uh, artist out of Minnesota. Um, and we, I, I was, uh, let's see, I, I inked the first issue. Um, I was a talent coordinator. So we went out to San Diego and I found a couple of artists out there. I was, they were all in line for portfolio interviews and for, for image. Uh, just like two two rows of guys sitting in chairs with their portfolios and and i walked through and was like huh oh, let's see i'll take him and i'll take him and i stopped and i had my business cards and i introduced myself and uh i ended up hiring two of the guys right there on the spot and uh they the one guy was the artist for angel wars uh well it was going to be a, a, a second book called the illuminati because mark uh clinton whiskey did the first I think we ended up doing, I know two issues, colored, pencil inked, colored, and I colored, uh, me and Doug Kramer colored everything. Um, but uh, the guy that owned the company, um, he put, he set aside X amount of dollars for it. And he had hired a couple guys over Europe to go to all these book fairs and stuff and research. He knew nothing about the comic industry and he wouldn't listen to us because we weren't college educated so he was he was roped into believing a couple of guys across the pond that were feeding the line of crap and they basically built him out of all his money <laughs> so um company went you know belly up and none of that stuff ever saw print so two almost three years of work just I know how that is. I, uh, yeah. I got hired years ago. I wrote I don't know, like six books. And uh, I don't think any of those books ever saw the light of day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I picked up with like issue two of one book and stuff like that. And the guy put all of his money into the first, I think, two books. And basically blew all of his money and nothing ever i never i never saw a penny never got nothing out of it but yeah it is what it is i guess learning yeah. experience yeah and, and that, that's the thing and, and you know we were doing we did a lot of coloring work for a lot of people um and thank god for aocom because doug and i were able to quit our day jobs and just work exclusively in the studio um for a long time and during that time i was you know, trying to pick up. I did a lot of work for Boneyard Press, Art Fisher, uh, Checker Comics, which was up in Dayton. We worked, yep. did some work with them, Lightning Comics. Oh, out of uh, Michigan. Yeah. They, yeah, because they did, uh, oh God, Bloodfire. Um, Elena. Yeah. Double Impact. Uh, Creed. Yeah. Um, I, I had a, an issue, one of Creed, there are three pinups in the back that I colored. Um, did the, the letters page, designed the graphics for the letters page for that. And we designed a lot of the ads for Lightning Comics in the back. They, you know, they had the buttons. Yeah. Uh, the Helena buttons and stuff. We designed those. That that was all us. Um, so, you know, you know, a lot of stuff. But uh, 
you know, my love was always superior seven, but uh, it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. <laughs> when I when I was moving from my house before I moved to this one, uh, I found a um, piece of artwork I got off of somebody. I I want to say, you know, of course it was at one of the date nerd Cincinnati or shows or whatever. It's from when you guys were pushing Freak Force. Oh yeah. And I know this is why you were going to have the crossover with Savage Dragon because he wanted the rights to Freak Force for the Freak Force. Yeah. 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 You guys had the rights to it beforehand. Yeah, you know, and he was so cool about it. Um, uh, he sent us a letter and I called him and we talked on the phone and he was very, very cordial. And he's like, I just, man, I just don't want to mess with, you know, lawyers and all that stuff. He's like, how about if, what do you say we do this? You know, you, you, you guys change your name and I'll let you guys do a crossover with Savage Dragon with, with your superior seven guys. Um, and I was like, okay. So we renamed the book Project Metaphors. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy that we hired to do the artwork, uh, Jeff Wesley, um, left and went and replaced Gary Barker, who was drawing Garfield at Paul's. So Gary left, retired from doing that because he'd been doing that for a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Wesley replaced Gary on Garfield and couldn't draw our book anymore. <laughs> at least we were losing them to good projects. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we and then uh, we I had hired another guy. Um, His name is John Aboigby. He lives, he's here in Cincinnati now, but he's from Baltimore. His father was a uh, some kind of an art teacher or a professor at UC, and he's a sculptor. And he's a phenomenal sculptor. He does uh, sculptures for uh, black celebrities. Um, he's done them for Bill Cosby and Denzel Washington and, um, you know, A-listers. Mm -hmm. um, so that was his father and John, uh, we hired John to replace Jeff and, and I've got, I've got the pages. John ended up doing two issues, almost two full issues of Project Metaphors. Force. Um, but when our, when our financier fell through, we could never see those through the light of day. So I, I, I uh, moved all that stuff over here to the studio a couple of years ago and I was flipping through it and I'm like, man, this, this book would have been fire. This was so, it was so fast paced. And so, I mean, you remember how the Superior 7 was. Oh yeah. yeah. So in your face and so just action, 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 action. And this was going to be another book, both different characters of the same mm -hmm. ilk and then they were going to cross yeah. paths. Well, I, um, I, like I said, I remember when you guys were pushing Freak Force or trying to, yeah. And like I said, I got the piece of artwork and somebody was uh, uh, doing the coloring on it and it's literally half colored somewhere. It's, it's in my collection, boxed away somewhere. Um, if I'd had time, I would have dug through and found it. So we did. Well, actually, same way with the Superior <laughs> Sevens. Um, but when you have, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably 300 boxes of books. Uh, let me, hang on, I'm going to turn around. Let me see if I can find something real quick. Okay. Bio character folder. He sees it, he's gonna recognize it. Let's run shit down the way. <laughs> if I can find it. I've got um, the last one I remember seeing when I was putting books away. Um, uh, is the guy coming up out of the ground? He's got his arms like in a V and he's coming straight up. I think it's the last issue. So I think it's issue five. Okay. And uh, of course, it's all signed, it's, it's got everybody's signature on it, I believe. So, and I, I, I don't know if this brings up any bad. Oh, yeah. Imagine this productions. Yep. Um, didn't, uh, didn't Dion go on to work for Kenner? Yeah. He went to Hasbro. No, Hasbro. Um, yeah. Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he went to, he, he was one of the guys that they moved up to uh, Rhode Island. Um, and I remember. I was actually working for Kinko's at the time and he called me and I was delivering. I was a delivery guy. So I would deliver stuff down to Kinko's. I worked at the Hyde Park store mm -hmm. and he called me and he's like, Rod, he says, man, we got these people in from Japan this morning and they made this big presentation. We got to do all these little tiny characters. He said, they're so stupid looking. 
He said, they're called Pokemon. He said, and it's all the rage in Japan and they're bringing it over to the States and we got to do all this artwork for it. He said, and it's so boring. <laughs> I can totally see that because them first batch, my kids loved Pokemon and them first batch, they're so basic. There's yeah. not really a whole lot to them. I can totally yeah, see it, that being boring. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This stuff is crazy. Yeah, there's a there's a whole issue. Uh, Aaron Locke, I don't know if you, you, you don't know Aaron Locke because he didn't like the spotlight. Mm. He did uh, almost two issues for me. Um, oh, here we go. Hang on a second. Gary Barker colored this in a hotel room in Chicago. We were drunk as skunks. Yeah, I have that. Yep. Yep. And mine and is uh, Garfield down at the bottom. Yep. He says, ah, color. <laughs> I want to say it's two thirds. So the, I don't think the big B guy in the background is finished on mine. Okay. Or if he is, he's partially finished. So was who was coloring it? Was it me or Dion? I on our Chris, do you remember? I cannot remember. It's it's you know shoot. It's I think that's I think that's BT. I think that's before Tina. That's got to be before my wife. <laughs> wow. So yeah. There you we, go. Oh geez. That's great. What a shoulda coulda. <laughs> Hey, I've, I, I I literally have artwork from my unfinished comics too, so I don't. Except for yeah. I have the rights to it, I know who has the other artwork, so I just got to get together and we actually got to get somebody to publish it. So, and it's only part one. What's it about? Um, mine's called Doc Haxon. Um, it's a um, Hellboy meets Doc Savage. Ooh. Um, Ooh. And um, the worst part about it is, is this is, I wrote this a long time ago, probably 2001, 2002, the original draft for it. And one of the weapons in the book is the cursed gun that Robert Ford used to kill Jesse James. And then shortly thereafter Ooh. is when they introduced the Winchester, you know, the, 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 um, in uh on uh supernatural and i'm like ah oh. except for mine doesn't just kill demons you load it with spells okay and it's cursed so you have to use it for good and if you don't use it for good then you become cursed by the gun so you become the coward you start stabbing people in the back and stuff oh wow um, i have all these scripts written because it was gonna be in four four part story arcs so it was going to be the first part, which is the uh, Doc Haxon and the Big Box of Evil. Um, I can't remember which was the second one, which was Doc Haxon and the Infernal Hell Machine. Um, then it was the, uh, uh, the Medusa Project and so forth and so on. And it was going to introduce mythology. Uh, it was at the beginning. So it, was in the, it took place in the 1930s. So... Like the Infernal Hell Machine, what it is is that the um, Nazis think that they figure out how to make an atomic-powered robot, but instead they don't. They create a parallel dimension, so it opens up, so it feeds these demons into these giant robots. So they're demonically powered <laughs> robots and stuff. Nice. <laughs> I have a Bible I wrote for it. I have all the characters created. Um, matter of fact, Jay Cordray did the... I want to say he did all the first are all the artwork for the first story arc and so the first the first issue of the first story arc i should say and then um i have in my shop on my back wall there is the last page to you know for the first issue so i have that hanging on my wall at my shop oh that's crazy and i'd like to see some of it man it sounds like some great stories oh yeah it's it's legitimately a book i just i started writing one night because i had a job where i just sat for like long periods of time and watched the machine run and i just yeah. started oh, jotting down you everything do, huh? Huh? <laughs> machine shop <laughs> uh, uh no i put glue on paper at the time so and then uh, okay I, then i hurt my back <laughs> which um 
then I, I, I left there and I did a bunch of odd and end jobs. And then I got a job working at a hotel and then I wrote it at the hotel because I'd sat for hours where it was just by myself and I right. just kept writing. Um, now I have, if I dig through, I probably got like, I have all the doc hacks and floating around here somewhere. I think, um, in physical form, the actual like PDFs are long gone. Cause I think that computer gave up the ghost years ago. Um, and I'm, I'm a guy who writes everything on, I mean, everything, every note I take for every project I work on is in, you know, notebooks like that. Right. So, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, uh, I would love to have actually ever get my work done, but it's one of the ones where it's, it's a, it's a side project. If it ever happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. That's, that's, why that's cool. And, and what is, what, what's the name of your shop? Are you game? Are you game? And that's pick. You're in Pickwell, right? Yeah, I'm in Pickwell. Yep. Okay. Yep, I am right. uh, at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickwell, Ohio. 124 North Sunset Drive. Yep. I'll have to come up and check that out sometime. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I just spent all day today uh, rearranging stuff. I was a little slow, so I, I decided to rearrange part of my store. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hey, it's yours. You can tinker if you want. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm in the process of uh, starting to look for a bigger building too. So I got, I, I'm, I've outgrown my shop badly, like two years ago. Wow. So like, okay. Yeah, I have. That's uh, a good thing. Yeah, it is. It's great. I mean, I, I, I've, I got the clientele, and I have the, uh, the product to fill a store. So now I'm just looking for a bigger storefront that's that I can still make money off of without spending all my money to have a store. So, right. Yeah. yeah. But the, 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 uh, <laughs> the ever present, uh, problem for shop owners. It's, it's that, uh, storefront that will kill you, you know? Well, yeah. actually right now it's, uh, getting your comic books, not damaged. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, shipping's been fun. Hasn't it? Yeah, we got our second week of Marvel through Penguin House. Yeah. And I believe probably three quarters of our books were damaged. Oh man. Yeah. And it's and it's it's ridiculous. And it's you know, it's a big week. It's the final issue of Immortal Hulk, which is probably my favorite Marvel book right now. And I can't read it because it's crushed. Oh geez, so, that bad. Well, I can probably sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm staring at the pile and I'm like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the crap books out. Cause they want you to take pictures, um, you know, all this stuff of the books to send them to them. So those are all sitting in a pile to be photographed that have all been photographed and then sent to them. And then we wow. got to wait to see if we can get our, you know, damage replacements. That's crazy. Yeah feels like back in the day when marvel left the first time and then they went back yeah <laughs> jesus <laughs> that sucks oh man it's 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 horrible at least at least diamond was getting on the ball about not having crushed books because they got new boxes and stuff where they don't they don't get crushed as easy yeah so huh. <laughs> so <laughs> you have a new book coming out before we get yes. sidetracked Yes. Yes. Uh, um, go ahead. You know, um, Roadkill Rampage. Yes. Yes. Issue we issue. it's it's the second issue, um, and it's we're, we're launching a Kickstarter for it on October twentieth. And uh, let me give you the rundown for it real quick. It's uh, let's see, Roadkill Rampage issue two picks up. Uh, it's, it begins with Tess um, still uh, in the forest, but now she's all alone. I mean, Tess is the main character in the book from issue one. Um, while she's in the forest, she'll, uh, there are a few new men that come into her life, but are they friend or are they foe? Um, along her path, she stumbles upon a dog fighting ring and being the animal lover that she is, she's bound and determined to shut it down or get shut down in the process. Uh, throughout the issue, uh, Tess becomes aware that she's being followed by some kind of a black dark evil um so ethereal black mist she's not sure what it is what and what it wants with her but it's pursuing her through the forest um she just knows that it's not good 
um, deep in her bones. So that's kind of what the issue is in the gist. Um, and it's, it's kind of, it's a, I want to say it's a, it's Pet cemetery meets Cujo meets, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's a lot of, when I, when I, when I write the book, I'm thinking of like Jeepers Creepers and, you know, I, and of course my favorite, my favorite is Halloween. Um, so, I, you know, it's the, it's the damsel in distress. It's Lori Strode, you know, in the forest, <laughs> you know, and she's, she's trying to find her way back home after the events of issue one. And, uh, of course there are pitfalls all the way through, um, and she doesn't know what the hell's going on and why it's going on. Um, so we get a little more, we peel back the end a little more in issue two, uh, reveal a little more, but we raise more questions than we answer. Um, so I am currently, um, the issue three script is done, but I have to go back and give it one final go through before I give the artwork, the script to the artist, Sean Langley. Um, uh, really good artist from Gallup Police, Ohio. Um, He's the artist on issue two, and he's going to be doing three and four for us. Uh, Amon Hill did the issue one, art on issue one. So um, it's a pretty fun ride. Um, a lot of scary, gory stuff. So <laughs> come along and hop on the Roadkill Rampage train and ride it with us through the forest. <laughs> now, can you still get? Can you still get issue one? Yeah, you can get issue one on the Hasm website. Okay. Um, Along with all the other uh, peanut pudding and jelly and pitter patter, they're all all available there. Along with um, Unchained and Arcana, which is Amon Hill's book, I believe that's still available on the website. Um, maybe <laughs> we're not we're no longer working with him, so I don't know how long that book is going to be up there. To be honest, um, but yeah, so yeah, if you want issue one, you can. Go to the website. You can order it there on the website, or if you see us at a show, obviously you can buy it from us at a show. Um, we are done with shows for the year. Um, decided to kind of play it safe, you know, because you know the whole COVID thing and winter's coming and people get sicker in a winter and we yeah. don't know what it's going to do. And so we we kind of chose to stay closer to home this year. So we only really did shows, you know, within the 200 mile radius um probably 150 mile radius so the furthest we went was uh, huntington for tricon, tricon. Uh, we did uh, columbus uh, lexington cincinnati um and uh, we might do a couple of little local things here like some breweries or stuff like that or we're doing a christmas walk here locally um but we're going to spend all summer or all winter working on books so when 22 rolls around, the 22 season rolls around, we have even more books. We've got issues. We'll have issue two of Roadkill. And hopefully by the end, by the time convention season kicks off next year, we'll have issue three under our belts. Um, we we'll definitely have issue issues one and two of Pitter Patter. Um, start writing the script for issue three of Pitter Patter. So the goal is to be productive in the winter time. But yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, come watch the, we're going to have a little launch party on the 20th um, so come check that out and uh, we put the link uh, for the notification of the Kickstarter can we do that here? Yeah should be able to um, baby can we do that? Well, I don't know, um, could, you can you um, if not I can, put, I can put it at the end when I put the credits and stuff I can you know you can find Rodney and and okay. productions of at and I can put all the information at the end the link for the uh um launch party the uh I think it's on my kickoff. did you get it to me I just sent it to Paul he's gonna put it yep put it all up. right cool I think all I got right. it on my okay. phone here thank you thank you thank you excellent that'll work there we go um it's you know, fun. Writing horror is fun. Oh yeah, I, I I love I. Well, you know what the worst part about it is, I, I probably people are probably on my podcast are tired of hearing me say this. Um, I had wrote a horror movie going into last year. I was supposed to shoot it last summer, 
Oh, wow. so 2020, I was supposed to shoot it. I had started casting it and everything and, and props had been built and all this stuff like that. And then COVID hit and shut everything down. And oh, while goodness. I'm sitting at home, you know, doing nothing for three months, I uh, ended up uh, watching a lot of TV, a lot more than I normally watch. I only, normally I watch about 16 hours a day. So it's probably putting in about 18 to 20 hours a day. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I watched um, a movie that had a lot of the same like plot points to my movie. So I was like, ah, crap. So I just trashed the entire, almost the entire movie, rewrote it. And now it's just setting in a, and then, then I moved. So I don't even know where it's at. It's in a notebook oh, somewhere. <laughs> um, and everybody who's, who I've told the story to has loved it so far. Um I had people cast. I have people who will come back if I if I start shooting again. Yeah. But it was one of the ones that was so disheartening that I was that close again to making a movie, and it all got kind of crapped on. So. So do you you have equipment and all that stuff to make a movie? I, you don't have to have a whole lot of equipment anymore. Yeah, I guess uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got some really nice cameras. Um, I have the editing software. Um, I have uh like i said i can i can i have a garage that i can make props in uh i have places i can shoot um you know i got people that can do special effects for me i have all that fun stuff and and it just it kind of um like i said it was so disheartening to get that close it's literally that's like the third movie i've i've wrote that i've gotten so close to working on yeah. And and then it, it the bottom drops out and everything else like that. It's it just kind of it hit me hard and I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna it might see the light of day as a book eventually. Yeah. Um, because I think it'd make a great comic. Um, but I don't know if I'm gonna make a movie now because I, I got I started really like busting butt on the podcast and stuff when all this stuff hit. Oh yeah, and it's I'm building and building and building and building. You know, I'm not one of them guys lucky enough that like on their third episode, you know, they suddenly jump like to the top of the line. I'm like, <laughs> dude, every episode I, I get, I get a few more people. Then I do uh, my other show, which is I, I do a Saturday morning cartoon show where I'm the host. Oh, wow. I air it on Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. to about 1130 Um I go through and I find all the cartoons that YouTube will allow me to use. I put old school commercials back in them. I come in, I give you little tidbits of information about the episodes and, and about the creation of the episodes and whatnot. And yeah, that's taken off. That's going through the freaking roof. I mean, oh, that's crazy. I didn't yeah, know anything about that. Yeah, I do. Um, Send me a link. <laughs> I, I will. It's, it's, uh, I do like a usually in about the first week i get about a thousand views per and then i use that as a commercial now for my other show that actually predates the second week oh yeah 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 build on it hell yeah yeah and I, I i have fun doing it and it's it's um i'm finding cartoons that i thought like i had one that i forgot that i thought didn't exist i thought i remember i i thought i remembered it but it was one called meatballs and spaghetti okay and it's basically making fun of meatloaf and like Sonny and Cher. It's this musician who's a, who's an overweight guy and his, his, his uh, skinny wife, he's meatballs and she's spaghetti. They tour the country <laughs> and I found one episode out of 26. Oh, man. So my, my goal now is that I know somebody out there has a VHS tape of Saturday morning cartoons so every episode, I'm like, if you have any of these episodes, like Turbo Teen, do you remember Turbo Teen? I've Vaguely. I've found seven episodes of like thirteen. Wow. And I think I found up to nine, but like two of them are in German because it was it was big overseas, but not here in America. Huh. Um, but yeah, I, I put it together. I, I I I put cartoons together. It's mostly '80s, but there is some '70s and some '90s. Um, I, I do, I come up, I, I set my little area up over here. I come down and talk cartoons for, uh, my, my, my 
is about a half hour. So if you can deal with me for a half hour, you can get about four hours of cartoons in there. <laughs> um, that's that's awesome, man. I gotta check that out. Yeah. And uh it's funny because I didn't think anybody would care about me. I thought, oh, somebody's just gonna be like, oh, get that stupid guy off there. Just we want to see the cartoons. And then I'm like, people are like, we love the host. I'm like, I feel good about myself. <laughs> They like me. They, they really like me. Really do. <laughs> uh, oh, that that's like, great. That's like being an old, you know, old man telling people to watch cartoons. Is what I tell people. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, every Saturday at the shop, that's what we do, man. I put cartoons in the DVD player and they run in the background. Oh, that's uh, great. Oh, man. Um, I, I know this is bad. I, I got to go back to uh, to Superior 7. Because I just, Uh-oh. I love that book. And I, if you don't want to talk about it, you just tell me and let me know. No, that's fine. Um, you know, it was really cool. Because I think the first issue, if I remember right, is like Splash it's, Page it's, and it's like Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. And that was so cool for a kid from Ohio. Because, you know. That's why we did it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, my God. It, it, it was fun seeing, you know, something take place in Ohio. Yeah. Um and and then now years later um it was a jeff johns did two books that take place in ohio and one takes place in piqua well all of the all of the marvel stuff takes place in ohio now the movies oh yeah <laughs> somewhere they in filmed, ohio <laughs> yeah they all filmed in uh cleveland and and uh cincinnati that's crazy oh man, it's, but yeah it's, it's you know you know what what sparked that was i i was such a marvel zombie when i was a kid um, and I read the I read Wolfman and Perez's Titans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read Firestar. I read Batman. Batman the Outsiders. Amazing Man. <laughs> um, and I didn't like. I didn't like that they weren't real cities. I mean, yeah. I knew Metropolis was basically New York, and I knew Gotham was basically New York. Um, but I liked Spidey swinging through Fifth Avenue or swinging through Central Park and the landmarks and stuff. And I like that. Um, so that was a huge influence. And I, and, and when we sat down to do it, I'm like, okay, we said, we're going to do it. We're going to base the team in Cincinnati and we're going to have landmarks. When I was in high school, um, cause we started this, my, it was my junior year of high school. So it was September of 80, Four was when Chris Dion and I met Chris in art school. Um, Chris was only at Col. We went. We all went to Colerain High School, and uh, Dion and I were juniors. And Dion and I had known each other since junior high. Um, he was a big bad artist at Colerain Junior, and I was a big bad artist at White Oak Junior. And then they both schools merged into Colerain Senior. Um, and Chris was the new kid. He went to South Dearborn. He lived in friendship indiana um and nobody knew who he was um we were sitting here talking about uh the new mutants because sink sink have had taken over the new mutants we were talking about that and we were talking about moon Knight, um moving from moon Knight to new mutants and uh, he was sitting there and he goes well the new mutants are cool but thor would kick all their asses so we all just kind of looked at him with our mouths hanging to the floor, like, well, who the hell are you? And uh, from that moment on, you know, we were just inseparable. Um, and we, we would sat in that art room. If we weren't in that art room creating, um, we were at the kitchen table at my house um, creating. And Dion would come in with uh, loose leaf paper with a character on it, like rat paint. He came in with, it was just a drawing of him walking. It was a profile of him walking. And he had a, a, a bean he had on and he was smoking a cigarette, which was, I thought was odd because Dion was very straight laced. But he handed it to me and I was like, who's this? He says, I don't know, his name's Rat Bean. I was like, okay. So I, I took that drawing and uh, Chris and I, came up with the backstory for him and uh Pat mass was the same mass was just a headshot he did a headshot of this character on a piece of paper and uh, no name no nothing and so i came up with the name of mass um 
We did a whole backstory on him. Um, and that's, you know, um, like Battle Ram was 100% my character. Um, Dion came up with the visuals for Blackwing, Ratbane. Um, Chevron was a friend of our Tony. He, Tony gave it to us, told us we could have it. He has since passed away. Um, and Sloth was Chris's character. Uh, to, White Eagle was Dion's character. Um, so we all had characters in there, but um, Chris and I, or I, came up with all the backstory for all the characters. Um, and then uh, Chris joined the Marine Corps out of high school, so he was gone for four years. And Dion and I went to the ACA College of Design in Cincinnati, and uh, I had worked on the Starport saga while Chris was in the Marine Corps, who wrote, wrote the entire thing. And uh, when Chris got out of the Marine Corps, we, I, got, I got the band back together and I said, okay, we're gonna do this. And I showed them what I had and they were all like, whoa, <laughs> what the hell, man? And, uh, and we did it, you know, we just, we knocked it out. Um, we made every mistake you could make doing it, but we did it. And, uh, it, and it was so, the, one of the most rewarding parts for us was that the kids coming up or the adults coming up and saying, wow, you guys are just a bunch of knuckleheads from Cincinnati and you didn't talk about it. You didn't just talk about it. You're actually doing it. And that was really cool because we didn't realize at the time how much influence we had on, on Josh Blaylock. No, you know, I've got fan mail from him. <laughs> you know and, and uh, john larder you know john and i are still friends i mean josh and i are still friends um you know john always tells me you know you guys you guys really really you know influenced a lot of people you might not realize it he said but you really did and then when i i stumbled across your letter and i'm like oh shit that's is that paul is that that's Pickle paul <laughs> yep, <that's me. laughs> like you, oh my god when you sent me that i was like I had to look. I'm like, my uh, that's my horrible handwriting. My just, I'm just like, oh my god, that's that is, you know. And, and I'm like, holy crap, that that you guys kept that for that long. And like I said, you guys, Superior Seven kind of like stuck with me a lot when I was a kid. Like I said, I I still have mine. Um, I have all, all the signed ones, everything. And mind you, that's. I've lost everything over the years. Yeah. I mean, I had to sell off my collection a couple times because I had, you know, when I hurt my back, I was off work for about six months. So, you know, no money coming in. You start selling off your stuff till you get your money. Right. Um, I went from like 40 boxes down to four. I oh. kept them superior sevens, stuff like that. I've been there. Been there. Um, <clears throat> and here's the thing. Your first issue inspired a book that I wrote uh, with my superhero team, I created called the Elite. Um, it's funny because this predates DC's Elite, DC J Justice League Elite, and stuff like that. Um, my first issue took place in Cincinnati. I had this splash page with Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, it took place. Uh, I knew. I doubt they would have allowed it, but um, it was going to be during a Bengals game. And, you know, basically be the Cincinnati football team. You weren't going to see, you know, the logo or nothing like that. But that's where it all starts with my book was it was going to be Cincinnati because um, it was basically they were uh, the team was based out of Wright Pat. Um, I had all this because I, you know, I'm from here. So I wrote right. what I knew. And, right. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, um, I have a box of all of the fan mail we ever got. And I still have every piece. Wow. Yeah, all of it. Um, and we got mail from set from five continents. Ooh. Yeah, Australia, West Germany, um, Europe, uh, all over. Um, and I, I've got, I've still got it all. <laughs> the, 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 I, that's even more amazing that you have all that, and you still found my letter, and it's just dumb. <laughs> but you know what's it? What it was is it was in uh, it was in a notebook uh, of stories, and I think I was going to respond to you, 
and I don't know if I ever got around to it or because I used to answer fan mail all the time and I would send stuff to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do some, uh, like a head sketch of somebody or I would color one of the prints that we always had at the shows and would send, mm-hmm. you know, send stuff. Um, so it wasn't with all the rest of the stuff. It was in the envelope. Um, but it was, no, it was amongst a bunch of artwork because I was moving artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was in a stack of artwork. And I, I opened it up and I'm like, hmm, Paul Lee, really? That Paul Lee? And I opened it up and I started reading and I started giggling. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> that was that was that was my the the first store I was part owner of. And uh what's up, Vince? My my youngest hanging out down here right now. What's up, but, Vince? Yeah, Vince. You going, what you doing, bud? You looking for something? What you looking for? Okay. I don't know. He's, he's looking for trouble. <laughs> that's exactly what he's, 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 uh, he's had a, he had a uh, meltdown a little bit earlier. He was really good. He, I, I have to tell everybody this, um, he's got autism. He's so, he's, he's good 90% of the time, but when he's bad, he's bad. So yeah. he just has a meltdown. He had a meltdown earlier today, but now he's been good. So now he'll just wander around the background. If I sit down, do not turn it up, turn it down. Can you hear that? No. Okay, good. No. So he he comes down here and watches because he wants to watch the big TV. I guess he, he's got his own big screen TV in his own room, but he comes down and watches my TV. So well, he wants um, to hang out with that. <laughs> oh, he, he always wants to hang out with me. He's 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 with me most of the time. I mean, he goes with a shop with me and hangs out. And he's That's my good. Buddy. He takes That's he good. Takes everywhere. But uh, oh my god, did the. But going back here with the with that, yeah, that was my uh, first shop. I was part owner of um, that. That predates me and my wife, so that's at least twenty eight years ago. Um, so wow, that's just that. That's crazy to me. That 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 it's, it's hard to think how long ago all that was. Oh yeah, and that, that, this issue one of Superior Seven we released that in nine, what ninety? Yeah, I, I was still in high school. Yeah, yeah. I graduated in '86. What, what about you? Uh, '92. '92. Okay, so okay. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm closing in on fifty, and and, uh, and actually a c- couple years ago, because he was out running me, and he was fast. And he's now he's strong. So the kid's a, a bull of a kid, and. Uh, I, I was chasing him at the park one day and I'm like, <gasps> I couldn't keep up. I'm like, you know what? I, I need to go to the gym. So I started working out and now I'm probably in the best shape I've been in since my twenties. I was going to say, you look, you look thinner. Oh yeah. Since I, the last I, time I saw you. Um, probably last time you saw me, I was about 220. Okay. Uh, I'm 180 something now. Um, I How got tall me, are you? Five, nine. Oh, okay. I was I was 175 180 in high school but I was six foot I'm six foot so yeah I weigh a little more than that now <laughs> a little more <laughs> well it, it, it got bad but it, it was one of the ones where I uh my body shape was so weird and I was getting kind of puffy and stuff and yeah and uh I looked and I was like man I can't keep doing this and my wife got me eating healthier now and and uh now I I it's weird to go back and look at like a year ago because I, I used to get up every morning and eat two sandwiches for breakfast. And uh, Vince, turn down. Thank you. And uh, now I eat maybe a sandwich a week. Um, yeah. I, I don't eat bread. Most, I, you know, if I eat a couple hamburgers, I'll eat like one with a bun and then one without a bun. Yeah. It's weird being healthy now, kind of, I guess. Well, yeah, it, you know... It, I'm not a big bread guy, but I like my dogs and my burgers on bread, you know? So if, if, if I can have that, I'm, I'm okay. I can give up most of the bread. Um, I like whole wheat pasta. Um, so that works. Um, but I like, I love vegetables. I, I love chicken. Um, you know, 
I can do it. When I set my mind to it, I can do it. I've lost um, 55 pounds before and I've lost 45 pounds before. Um, so I can do it. It's just have to, I have to set my mind to it. And I have to really, you know, stick to it. Yeah. That, that, that was... haven't gotten to that point and I need to, because I, I, I put all my, I've got my COVID 40. I'm carrying that around. Yeah, I, I need know. to get rid of that. <laughs> I was like last week the, the with the weather change we went from being really hot to cool and now we're back when, when we went back to being hot my allergies were just killing me my nose is all stuffed up everyone's like are you sick I'm like I've just got allergies I can't yeah but I feel fine I just got to blow my nose all the time I know the dog stuffed up that's exactly what I was doing <laughs> of course my wife works in the hot she works she's a medical assistant she works at the doctor's office and she looks because are you sick I'm like no fine <laughs> so i uh, i saw that today's your anniversary uh so yep. happy anniversary thank you uh, uh, how many years been together for 28 years we met at my comic shop um we're going to be this is our together um our wedding anniversary is in march so in uh, a couple years we'll be together for 30 and married for 25 so we're trying to figure out what we're going to do for that big event. So I think we're going back to New Orleans, I think. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I've never been to New Orleans. But that's cool. It's a blast. I, I, I'm not a drinker or nothing like that. But to go down for the, you know, just the adventure, I guess, of it was, was yeah. actually really fun. Yeah. Uh, and then Darby, you know, Darby Watkins. Uh, he always gets artwork done. He's he's the one that gets amethyst. Okay. okay. He's got. Um, Darby just missed it because he went down the Wizard World, uh, like uh, New Orleans, like the week before we were there. He's like, you went down? I was like, nah, there's no way I would go down for a convention. I want to go down to have one is, is that my, for the first time ever, <clears throat> we're in a place well enough that we can go on vacation where it doesn't yeah. have to be a business trip yeah um you know we've been to baltimore chicago we've been to atlanta but i always have to like justify it by doing it either a convention or go down to buy or stuff to yep. make it and now we don't have to do that no more so it's kind of nice that's good yeah definitely okay. she's getting sick of it <laughs> so is she, you said you met her at the comic shop so she's is she a comic fan too no um her one of her best friends um was trying to buy a book for his girlfriend um and tina was his ride and he's like hey i need to stop in the store to go get this book and tina's like i'm not going in comic books are for kids um <laughs> and he's like go inside because you're not going you're gonna be mad if you have to wait in the car so she came in and I just happened to be there because I worked down the street. My regular full-time job was a uh, grocery store manager at the time. Right. And um, so I came down to the, uh, on my lunch break, because our books were supposed to be in, they were running late. And um, I ended up seeing this redhead girl that I was like, oh my God, you know, I was like checking her out. And, but I had just came off a bad relationship. She had just came off a bad relationship and we were just like, neither one of us thought anything about it. Um, and my partner, Chris, he goes, he calls me, I call up him later and he goes, Hey, he goes, um, you know that redhead that was in here. And I was like, yeah, he goes, uh, she thinks you're cute. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, Chris, you know, I was thinking he's feeding me a bunch of shit. Right. And, um, and he goes, well, she left your number. And I'm like, whatever. Oh, and wow. he goes, he doesn't believe me and hands her the phone. And I'm like, uh, um, uh <laughs> and i went down after i got off work we talked um i was totally just taken by her and and uh she thought i was kind of obnoxious because i didn't really i was like I, like i said i just came off a bad relationship and i just like kind of i didn't really talk a whole lot you know we were just kind of she was there uh we went out that weekend um we thought we were just going to, you know, actually, we just thought we'd probably be, end up being friends, you know, and hanging out. And it just kept going and going and going and going and going. 
and uh it hasn't always been easy because i'm not the easiest person to deal with um i uh i get moody and and uh uh i have you know dealing with my ocd and stuff like that but she's put up with me and yeah and uh I love her to death and, and I got four great kids because of her. And, and that's awesome. Yeah. If you, if you can find a woman that'll put up with your shit and still love you despite it all. Oh, that, that's, that's why I tell everybody. I was like, man, I was like, I know she's not, she was never for the look. She was never for the money. She loved me for who I was. And they're like, what is that? Cause I didn't have money when we met. <laughs> and I was a dorky kid when we met. And I was like, she's, she stayed with me through all of that. And uh, she knew from day one that I was the guy that had the comic shop. I was the guy who collected books. Um, I was, uh, you know, the horror movie guy. She knew that from day one. And uh, matter of fact, shortly after me and her got together, we went to Motor City Con for the first time because her family lived like, 20 miles away okay and uh we went up there and i remember taking her because that was back when girls did not go to comic conventions oh yeah it, you it was man could you imagine if we were in our 20s now oh my God. <laughs> it was legitimately i think when 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 me and her went there was maybe 10 girls yeah. and like two thousand guys and half of them were booth babes <laughs> yeah exactly or and girls with their boyfriends like what did you bring me to yeah what is and, this shit oh yeah and did we, we go in, now <laughs> oh and she walked in and she just looks around she looks around she goes what did i get into and then she ends up because she's she loves artwork she's not really a comic collector she likes certain artists right and um like she's a huge fan of joe lindsner um she loves um uh tim vigil um she, you know and then of course her like mainstream stuff is she loves uh poison ivy from batman so any type of poison ivy book comes out i usually get it for her um you know she might have two short boxes of comics um and stuff like that but uh yeah it's never been her whole thing but she stuck with me through all of it so that's awesome I uh, speaking of Lindsner, I just did a, a spot illustration for Joe Monks. Oh wow! Um, he's 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 down in Florida now. He's blind. Oh, did not know that. Yeah, he, he he he. I don't know if it was macular degeneration or what, but he he's blind. Uh, but he directs movies. Um, he's really big into horror. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if he directs movies still. I know he did mm -hmm. when he was blind when he was still up in New York. Mm -hmm. Um, but he and his wife live in Florida and she recommended me to him to do a spot illustration. So it's on my page. If you want to check it out. Um, check it out. And he's going to, he's putting together cause he can't travel. Um, he's going to just going to do like local shows in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, when his wife can go with him and be his, his eyes. Um, but he's putting together, he's doing a, basically, I think they're going to be like ash can format. Mm-hmm but it's going to be like zines. Um, it's all going to be horror, horror related stuff. And he's basically reaching out to some of his old buddies from back in the day for the artwork and stuff. And uh, he mentioned something about me doing some sequential work for him. Um, but I think he's, he's, he's fixated on getting these first two issues done. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll talk about the sequential stuff later. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was cool. Cause he, I mean, he was the one back in the day we went to New York in 90 and we sat next to him and Joe's we sat in between Lindsay and Monks and Eastman and Laird <laughs> and we were in the middle um and Joe was just if you've ever met Joe Monks Joey Monks he's just oh, yeah. he talks a mile a minute and he's very passionate about what he does um and he just schooled us about comic book buyer's guy and and uh, I'll get all the addresses and put together your submission packs and blah, 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 blah. And send it out to all these guys. And there's 15 distributors and you get, you know, they're all in the back comic. We knew nothing about any of that stuff and uh, really opened our eyes to, to a lot of it. Um, and then we were, we went back in 92 and with issue, we had the first two issues and we had issue three in production. So we had like a, um, 
sample pages and mm-hmm. a volume. Um, but we were sitting there and these kids, these black kids come up and all we heard was Superior 7? Oh man, they didn't tell us Superior 7 guys was going to be here. And they come running up to the table. You guys got books? You got books? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we got issues one and two. Like, oh man! Because they were, they lived in, in uh, the Bronx and the book was sold out everywhere in the Bronx. And, and that was our biggest area, obviously because it's so densely populated, mm-hmm. but New York City was our highest, um, our biggest area of consumption where we sold the most issues. Um, and then Houston, Texas was number two for whatever reason. But anyway, um, so they couldn't get books. They couldn't get reorders from Diamond. Um, so we ended up having to re- reorder. Um, uh, remind me to tell you a story about issue one being stolen. Uh, <laughs> so uh, then based on that conversation, um, we, we ended up doing reorders. But yeah, it, there were like five five kids and they were freaking out about it. And they were, so they we had a character binder and they were flipping through and checking out all the characters that they hadn't seen in the books yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one the one little kid looks at Dion and he goes, and I said, yeah, that's, that's Rat Bane. That's the leader. And he looked at Dion and he goes, yo, man, I know you had something to do with that, brother. And Dion looked at him and he looked at me and he kind of smiled. And he said, no, man. He said, actually, that was his idea. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so the kids was like, what? <laughs> but well, you have a little gaggle of kids, man, bought their issue one and issue twos and was running through the convention. You talk about man you can't buy that no no <laughs> that was so awesome <laughs> but anyway we so we got back to, to to the city here after a 17 hour drive and we let, we got home at like two o'clock in the morning and we left everything in the car bad mistake uh we go out in the morning to unload the car that chris had a little geo metro mm-hmm little hatchback the hatchback was shattered all we had three book three boxes of issue one gone those were our remaining issues of issue one gone Uh, all of chris's markers gone everything that was in the back was gone (laughs) so all the only copies of issue one that we had were our own personal copies so yeah (laughs) And they never resurfaced. You, no, you we 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 went to the. This was we we were in an apartment complex over at Price Hill. We went to all the dumpsters and checked them because you know as soon as those kids found out they were full of comics, they just ditched them. Mm-hmm. And we walked all over those complexes looking for the boxes, never found them. You know, so. I thought worst come the worst, man. Somebody would have taken them and dropped them off at like try to get some money out of them at a shop or something. Oh no, we 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 ran that gambit too. Did the whole loop two seventy five, um, you know, looking for them. Um, Lawrenceburg, I mean, all over the place, Kentucky, yeah, and nothing. They were just gone. That's probably amazing. 300, three, 300 copies, just gone. <laughs> so if you come across the stack, come across a big stack of them somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, man, that that's bizarre. It's, I mean, I've had stuff stolen out of my car, but nothing like that. I literally yeah. had somebody break into my car one time and go through my stuff and take like a handful of things instead of just grabbing everything and running. Yeah, they took time. They went through my oh, yeah. glove compartment. They looked through, and this is back when everybody had cassette tapes in their car. Yeah, I had probably a hundred cassette tapes. They took like five. It would have been they were particular. To, yeah, to grab the bag and run off. They stole five cassette tapes out of what that. five cassette tapes did they take? Um, I want to say like uh Pantera and maybe the some good shit. Rose. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and then years later I got broke into, and by this time I kind of got smart and I, I don't I wasn't keeping you know um my CDs, my regular CDs in my car. I kept like you know, either A, just the, just, that's the CD themselves, or burnt copies. Yeah, I always made burnt copies. And, and they stole the burnt copies. 
<laughs> and they stole the worst part about it is, is that I had the burnt copies of uh, Johnny Cash and um, burnt copies of Robert Johnson, the Millennium Collection. Oh man. And that's like, I think it's like four discs for both of those. And they stole those. And those were literally just in a, it's like a slip thing in my car's glove compartment. They took that. Yeah. And that we knew who did it. That's the worst part about it. That was the one where, when the cops showed up, they're like, well, we can't find it. We, we don't know who did it. And everybody's like, the guy that lives in that house right there, the one that's staring at us through the window, it's him. And their cops are like, well, we don't have any proof. I'm like, everybody <laughs> knows it's that guy who does it. And um, then like three weeks later, he gets busted, breaking into a, um, a dentist office. And he steals like implements. He steals like dental tools. Stuff there's no way you could sell. And the worst part about it, you know, the worst part about all that was he didn't sell any of it. It was all in his, because he was in an upstairs apartment. Yeah. In the attic, he found the the door to the attic. He was storing all that stuff up there. So when they find him, they find everything. Oh, wow. They find just everything he had stolen. And then the cops sat on it for I don't know how long till everybody just kind of gave up and just let the cops have their shit. Because <laughs> That's messed up. Oh, yeah. But it was bad because everybody's like, that guy, that guy right there, that's the one who stole everything. A scumbag up there in the window. Yeah, yeah the that's looking it. Looking at us, the one who's like <laughs> peeking behind the window so you can't see him. That's him. Ah. But, Crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, man. we get. We, I got way off topic on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I'm not going to lie. Good, Next time we do a show, uh, you do a show, and I'm at, you need to bring me some pages or something that I can see of the original run of Superior 7. Because I have to see that. Like I said, you know, what is that? 30, almost 30 years ago that that book yeah. did? Yeah. And it's one of the things that I always wanted Back to... Back in the 90s? Yeah. Tina, you, you've got a Tina, and I've got a Tina. And she The worst thing for her to hear come out of my face is, back in the 90s, she hates that. Cost me so much money. Cost her so much money. Oh, my God. Just to get my characters back so they were my characters. <laughs> oh, that's what scares me about uh, one book I did. Uh, that one I told you about that takes place. It starts in Cincinnati. Um, I had a guy do the artwork on it. The first issue was done. I saw the artwork. I seen it all. That guy bolted and I never saw him again. Uh, and I don't know whatever happened to the original artwork. I don't know if he kept it. He, he could have published it for all I know. And I've never seen a penny of a book I wrote. And, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's. Yeah, um, it's, it's a minefield, man. It really is. Um, and it's no different now than it was back then. Um, the only thing. My our saving grace was we were all buddies from high school, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and Dion, you know, he was in town a few months ago because um, his mom had passed, and uh, he messaged me on Instagram and said, "Hey, I'm in town, man, for a few days. Do um, you want to get together?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" And he says, "Well, I can do it tonight. I've got tonight." So we met up at Adriatica's in Clifton, mm -hmm. um, and. We had we sat there and had pizza and talked for three and a half hours. And uh, it was cool uh, that we, we were able to do a lot of apologizing for sh shit that we had done to each other when we were, you know, kids. Yeah. You know? Um, and things that uh, how much I meant to him, how much I influenced him, because I, I was really hard on Dion mm -hmm. because the Superior Seven was really my dream. Mm -hmm. and uh for whatever it's worth i don't know that it was really chris or dion's dream i think they just kind of went along with it because we were all friends um but uh dion was a, he worked in, at cons at the meat packing plant and he was working 10 hour days packing meat and then he would come home he's living over in avondale in a real shitty apartment a bad part of town and he would sit there and he would work on pages. And Chris and I would go over there once a week. 
white guys in a black neighborhood. And we would go up to the seventh floor to his apartment. And we'd sit in there and look at what he'd done. And he was living with a girl at the time that wasn't good for him. And uh, <laughs> so there was a lot of shit that, go, that went on. And uh, uh, he reminded me of, we did one of those shows up in, Dayton, up in uh, one of those ass shows. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dave Campiti was there doing portfolio reviews and he ripped Dion a new ass and completely destroyed him. <laughs> and, uh, and we couldn't find him. He was gone. And uh, I found him out in the hall <laughs> and he was just, he was just destroyed. <laughs> I went out there and I, I got him and I said, come on. You know, screw that guy. What does he know? <laughs> and I brought him back inside, and we met Gary Barker. Mm-hmm. And Gary Barker just gushed over this stuff. <laughs> and he said, "We said, what do you think? Hey, will you look at our issue one? What do you will you tell us what you think of it?" And it was all on Crescent Board because <laughs> mm-hmm. you know we didn't know anything, and it was all oversized and it wasn't proportioned to comic book size. <laughs> and I'll never forget as long as I live. <laughs> Gary looked at it and he goes, well, I think the first thing you need to do is redraw this book because it's the wrong size. And you're not going to be able to print a comic book at that comic book size. And 56 pages reminder, remember. Yep. And it was magazine size. <laughs> yeah, that's why it was magazine yep. size. Because <laughs> we, we, we very briefly broached the subject of redrawing it to Dion and they basically told us to piss off. Um, which, yeah, there was no way. It was too much stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but issue two, if you remember, issue two had some some of the pages in the front had like graphics and stuff. Yeah. Because they were done that size too, the first 17 pages. And I went in and I cut and pasted it. Because at that time I was working at the art department at Duro, well, Duro well, Bay. So um, Gary really, really turned him around. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we were sitting there at the pizza place and we were talking and he was like, you know, that, he said, that really saved me. You know, he said, you, you, you forcing me to go back inside. Cause he said, I was ready to, to walk out of that hotel, hitchhike back to Cincinnati. And I was done with comics. I was just, I wasn't going to do it anymore. He said, but you, I remember you picked me up and you throw me back in that room and you forced me to go back and do it. And that's when we met Gary Parker and everything mm-hmm. changed because Gary loved his stuff. Um, and I was, I, I didn't, I was like, really? <laughs> and I had completely forgotten about that because, mm-hmm. oh my God, we, you know, we were just, we went through so much together um, <laughs> to think about that. And as he was telling the story, it was coming back to me mm-hmm. and I was just like, wow. And he said, and I said, you know, I apologize to him. I said, you know, I, I pushed you a lot. And uh, he said, well, he said, you didn't push me enough. He says, I, I wish you would have pushed me harder. He said, because I didn't always put my best foot forward when it came to the Superior 7. And uh, he said, I, I wish I would have listened more. He says, but, you know, he says, we're, we're, we're 50 now and we can't go back to our 20s. He said, but, you know, knowing everything that I know now and what we had back then, I didn't realize what we had. And you did. And he says, that's and I regret that. <laughs> and I was like, OK. <laughs> So it was a good three and a half hours of us, you know, 50 year old men talking about us at 20 and you know how stupid you are and how many oh. stupid things, mistakes that you do and wrong decisions that you make when you're 20, um, being selfish and stuff like that. And, and we really, I think our friendship really grew a lot mm-hmm. in that three and a half hours. And we just, we've stayed connected on Instagram and, and stuff like that. And, uh, so that was really, really good. Um, so yeah, he's he's considering he, I, he's he's more a brother than he is a friend. I mean, we've known each other since Jesus. We were in the eighth grade. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah. good backstory for you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 pretty amazing stuff. I mean, I've I've got a couple friends that I'm still friends with from back. I got I got. One of my really good friends, and we we see each other sporadically because he's life, you know. He's yeah. he's um, 
we've been friends. Literally, our parents were friends before me. He, me and he, neither me or him were born. Right. Uh, he, he's my he, and I always tell everybody he's my brother. I don't care. And then my other buddy's been my buddy since junior high, and I'm still friends with him. And you know, it, it's being able to have friendships that long. You know, you're going to have your rocky points and stuff like. Oh that. yeah. You just like, you know, but man, the fact that you guys have have, you know mended bridges and and stuff like that's really cool you know yeah and uh and, you know chris and i we've been through some some rough patches too um but yeah i mean we're still we're still really really close really tight um you know dion lives out in california now um he's doing freelance work uh, mostly for 20th century fox um but which is now disney yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's out there with his wife um, and his son. <laughs> he's got two sons, and now he has a grandson who looks just like him. Um, it's hard to believe that he's a grand he's a grandfather. But um, his his one son cosplayed as the Red Hood. He was a Marine. Uh, he was in the Marine Corps for four years, and uh, he's all about the Red Hood. And he's got this badass cosplay. And Neon sent me pictures. He said, "I raised him right." <laughs> That is neat. I got I get the red hood over there. Yeah. Look carefully right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Yep. All my other helmets. We uh, started watching the Titans um, on HBO Max. Love it. I, I got to get back to watch it. I only watched the first episode of this season so far. Same with Doom Patrol. But I love everything so far. And I, I'm one of them guys that I think I'm going to wait till all the episodes are done. Yeah. And, binge it in like two days because i'm horrible with that um i i i my wife is like well would you savor it you know i'm like it's it's still you know like a year before you get it anyway so what's a year or what, what's 52 you know what 52 weeks or what's 50 weeks of way yeah. <laughs> oh yeah well we just i mean we binged the first two seasons and uh and then we're we were we we got caught up with this with uh, season three and now tomorrow night's the, the final episode of season three, um, and then we we discovered Doom Patrol while watching the Titans, mm -hmm. and there's three seasons of that, yep. so we're currently on episode three of season one, and it's fun. I don't I knew nothing about the Doom Patrol, um, and it's fun, you know. And Brendan Fraser's great, you know, so we're really <laughs> enjoying it that's a great cast and it's like yeah. that, it, you almost feel like that show doesn't deserve the cast that it gets but it's yeah. oh man matt Broomer is a um, negative man um and I, I cannot remember her real name but she was candy on candy uh, and two and, half half man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, james bond is <laughs> yeah yeah is the chief the uh, only only one that i don't really dig is i don't like the casting for cyborg I think he's too small. Yeah, you know, it's almost like we talk about this all the time because we're always like, you know, it's just weird that that DC allowed them to use Cyborg of all people. Yeah, I'm like, why is he not in the Titans? Yeah, and and you know, you've already got him in Justice League. You know, why yeah. would you? Because it feels like it, there's it's cheapening the character. Yeah, and. I mean, the, the guy does a, a, a decent job at it, but, you know, I'm not going to fault him, but it's, it's, he's not, it literally looks like something that I could go buy at, you know, Spirit and I could be Cyborg tomorrow for Halloween. Yeah. And yeah, that, um, that's what bothers me. That's, that, that's it too. Cause I keep mm -hmm. looking at it and going, wow, that looks really cheap. Mm hmm. It, so that and the fact that he's too small. <laughs> yeah. But but then you look next to him and you look at Robot Man or you look at, you know, as easy as it is to make Negative Man, they at least do a pretty good job at him. Um, yeah. uh, okay, this is the one thing I have a problem with. That's not what I figured the negative being to look like. The negative being always to me was just a void, a black void in the shape of a person. And it's yeah. things like crackly lightning, but I get that it, that a black void wouldn't read well on TV, but reads great in comic form. Right, exactly. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the only things I was, I was talking about. Um, stuff I've written, 
and people go, well, why don't you try to make the movie into a comic? I was like, sometimes it'll work as a movie because it depends on the medium. Sometimes it can work in both. Sometimes I don't think it can. Yeah. Um, well, that you know, that's the, the, the thing with Roadkill Rampage is in my head, it is so a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do pretty comprehensive thumbnails. Mm-hmm that I provide for that I provided for issue one and I provided for issue two. Um, but I don't think I'm going to provide as comprehensive um, because it, 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 I've, I've come to realize through some recent conversations with artists that handcuffs them. And I never thought of it that way. Mm-hmm. I've just always, I know how it is in my head. So I know what I want to see when I flip through the book, mm-hmm. but again, that handcuffs the artist. So, um and we sean and i talked about it and i said okay there's there's going to be a couple of scenes that i want a particular way Mm -hmm. but the rest of the book i'm going to leave it up to you um so i'm going to be interested to see what issue three looks like compared to issue two Um, i mean issue two looks pretty pretty sweet um but we'll we'll see Uh, (laughs) i'm just i'm just curious yeah see if the if there's a big big enough difference he, he's just not having it today usually i tell him to turn it off but we used to have the the roku where you plug in the you, know, you just put the headphones on yeah that one since i got the new tv that roku remote does not have the headphone jack oh so man he, he would go just put the headphones on and everything else like that it's not not happening this time so oh well, that's not good hopefully hopefully because it's so light i don't think it'll appear but i'm hoping so yeah I, not, I mean i, I can't i can't hear it but I, yeah. like you said that doesn't necessarily mean anything yeah but i can go through and uh, uh when i re-edit and i can take the sound i can i can i can go into the sound bar and move stuff so i can hopefully if there, if you can hear it, it it it'll be nothing so okay that's cool yeah don't want you getting in trouble no i've already i've i've, I've only done that so far um most stuff is is uh um when i do my other show the cartoon one um it'll go copyright claim it's not demonetized i'm like i'm not monetized anyways i still got to get like 500 more subscribers before I'm monetized. <laughs> and uh it's the, the they'll just say any money that's made off of this goes to i'm like oh, i don't care so <laughs> right i've I, twice Two times I've been taken down. Um, one was for Bionic 6. And the other one, I risked it because I found a episode of uh, Spider-Man's Amazing Friends on YouTube. On somebody's, and I was like, all right, if they got it passed, then I can probably get it back. Nope. nope. <laughs> they nailed me. <laughs> so Damn I had it. To- uh, yeah, you try. Disney, Disney went after me for my for my showing of uh, of uh, Spider Man's Amazing Friends episode one. <laughs> yeah, that's like I, the one thing I don't get is uh, that I get Spider Man. I get because Disney has got that on Disney Plus. I get that Bonic right. Six. I have no idea because it's not on anywhere. It's right. not available on DVD. NBC Universal hit me with that they're like nope that is ours take it down and i'm like okay but you all ain't promoting it yeah i was like i was like man i was like you you let me get the rights to this i was like i will air it every week (laughs) i'll air it every day (laughs) i will i will go and try to make a comic book out of this again i will because i think bonic six would make a great comic book yeah i mean honestly what what they obviously don't care about it no you know what what difference does it make if somebody else is taking you know it's like we could you know the whole fan art thing it Mm -hmm. it shows or or, or do you have the copyrights to do that you know i mean no and they don't have the manpower to send everybody that goes to a show a cease and desist Mm -hmm. it's free advertising for all the companies so you know well, remember, was it a few years back when DC Warner Brothers was going around? I want to say like San Diego and New York, and anybody that had an exposed DC tattoo got a cease and desist and had to cover up. What? 
Mm hmm. Yep. They, uh, oh man, it's got to be like f- at least five or six years ago now. Yeah. They, they were telling people that they had to cover it up. Um, let's see if I can pull it up here on my phone here. Um, they did, they went after people for that. It was, uh, cover up your tattoos while you're out and about at conventions. Let's see. How do the heck can they enforce that? I have no idea. I don't think they could. DC tattoos. That's just bizarre. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, uh, uh, DC to prosecute tattoos comic mix 2011. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they went, they went after people for DC tattoos back then. And, uh, that's just, who, who, whose brainchild was that yeah but they went after him for i mean i the worst part about it is is i want to say it actually appeared on uh um but it ended up being yeah tattoo copyright yeah there you go talk about negative publicity yeah, i don't know if you can read that or not but yeah they, uh, they went after him for um I'm like, man, why would you? <laughs> That's just dumb. A, that makes zero sense. You have people that put in your characters on their bodies mm-hmm. as a tribute because they love those characters so much that they've decided to carry them around for the rest of their lives. You're going to mm-hmm. penalize them because they well, love your characters? They, um, um, I can't remember which one it was. Um, if it's, it might have been both sides, it was uh, went after um, some daycare had uh, comic book characters painted on a wall and they got a cease and desist. Um, yes, yeah, you're just like, seriously, guys, you're, you're taking the people that, that love your product, and especially if you're in a daycare, you're taking the next wave of your fans. Yes, the next generation. Away from them. Yeah. So that's crazy i i don't get it but you know I, I i love godzilla so i have a godzilla tattoo so yeah it's gonna be on me until i die <laughs> there's some massive accident that takes it off. burns it off <laughs> uh, get megatron over here and i got uh um voltron and mazinger z and nice <laughs> yeah that that's uh the my one buddy who's uh he's a comic book artist he's a tattoo artist slash comic book artist he realized that he wasn't making much money doing the comic book thing so he started tattooing yeah uh, he did the uh voltron and and uh, uh mazinger z on my leg it looks like a, a video game so it's got one on one side and it says verse and it's got them like coming at each other like in a video game <laughs> what, what's his name casey anderson casey anderson okay yeah. He's uh he's out of he's semi local to me. He's actually tattooing out of Yellow Springs now, so he's actually driving. Okay. He was a hell of a drive for him to drive to me, and now he's driving all the way yet even further. Uh, hell of a hell of an artist. Um, if I had some of his art floating around here, I'd show you. Um, right now I'm working with a guy, um, a guy named C. Raymond out of uh, San Antonio, Texas. He did a uh, well. I used one of his pre-existing books and we did a store copy of the book so i had 50 copies of his book signed and numbered one through 50 and then on top of that i bought some of the original artwork so when i get rid of all 50 copies um we're going to give away two pieces of original artwork to the people who bought the book oh nice so that's very cool yeah and he I, I try to promote like any of my friends that do books. Um, I help them when I can. It's one of them things. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of guys up for like free comic book day and whatnot anytime I can. This year was a little odd. Last year was really odd. So we didn't, we haven't done any in the last two years, but yeah, you know, we were supposed to do PickleCon again last year and then that fell through and then we were supposed to do it this year and I didn't want to risk it this year. So Next year. <laughs> yeah. 
Wait, wait and see. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've so far I've done the only shows I've personally done, set up, and sold at have been the Dayton shows. Um, I've gone to uh, no, I did uh, Jim and Dan shows. Jim and Dan, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Jesse, it's hard for me to do uh, Gem City being two days. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to leave the store and to take that much product out of the store because my, you know, right. Said, justify taking it it's i i make too much money on saturdays at the shop to, to walk away from it. oh yeah that, no that's i mean that's a good thing yeah but now sundays since i'm closed on sundays i'll go to do sunday shows all the time whenever i can if they're local so do you do you ever go up and do ash i haven't done ash in years yeah. um and it's funny because we just talked about them a couple days ago um it's funny because the last time I did one, it was weird because it was almost all the same people. Yeah. And that's weird. Almost, you can almost set your clock, like watch, like, man, this guy, and there he is. And you're like, I haven't seen that guy in 10 years, and he still walks in at the same time. Well, yeah, when um, when when we started going back when we were doing peanut pudding and jelly, um, we did a couple of ass shows, and it had been. 10 12 years since i'd done it and it it was the same thing it was the same people in mm -hmm. the same spots mm -hmm. um but you know we had new product so the first first couple of times we did it it was okay because it was a new product um and then it was you know it was the same thing it was i mean we made when we were up there with superior seven we used to kill that show you know we made damn good money oh yeah um a lot we did that show a lot probably twice a year i um, was just telling some guys a while back because you know they're talking about you know shows man there's a lot of shows i'm like man i was like you don't even understand i was like when i was in the heyday so 91 to i don't know 94 ish i guess i did at least one show a weekend if not two i would get up get off work on fridays i would load up the vehicle we would do a show in dayton on saturday we would drive back restock then drive to columbus and do a show or we drive to cincinnati or we drive to indiana or we drive to zanesville or we drive up to toledo or we drive you know there was every weekend was at least one show and hell at one point dayton had two shows Sometimes yeah. Cincinnati had two because you had since actually in Cincinnati you had Sharonville. Um, I want to say Indianapolis had two shows because you had the Ash show at Shadeland, and then you could go a little further up the road like the weekend later, and there was another show. It was a Jubilee show. Yeah. And every weekend, at, you know, at least one show, sometimes two. And I, I told my wife, I was like, I'll never do that again. I mean, that was back in the day. And we did it again kind of when the shop started, when, when the shop I own now started. We were doing as many shows as we could. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't need to do those no more. I'm, I make decent money at the shop. And I'm like, I'm not packing up everything on a Friday night. Oh, it's something. hard to do that with a 50-year-old body. <laughs> well, I got, I got, I got, I got. I had teenage boys at the time. My my two middle boys were uh, yeah yeah. My oldest son was off in the navy, but it was uh yeah. I just pawned a lot of work off of them. <laughs> Heck yeah, <laughs> I still do. My 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 twenty my twenty two year old. He he still he works for me. Um, he watches his his younger brother two days a week, and then he works for me. Um, he we're going to slowly get more hours. Uh, for him at the shop but he's uh him and his brother just moved out his my my son brandon is 24 just bought his first house and i'm like man i just bought my first house at 46 <laughs> <laughs> but you know and also if i would have bought my first house at 24 i would have lost it because you know i've i've gotten laid off and everything else and Oh yeah, off work for six months, and you know you got to pay those house payments while you're off work. So, and uh, yeah, they don't go on pause. 
No. At least, at least my car payment. Well, I can't say that because I still deal with that to this day. I was supposed to have it so that if you were off work, injured or whatever, my car payment was either get paid. And I found out that that was a scam. Oh, man. And what they do is, well, they keep, they just run you around. They just give you the runaround until basically you either A, pay the place or you lose your car. Yeah. And most people end up paying it once they get back to work. Well, I fought with it, fought with it, fought with it. And I kept getting paperwork. They're like, I'd call and I'd be like, hey, you know, I need to talk to such and such. Why isn't this getting taken care of, man? I'm supposed to be getting this taken care of. And uh, one day I was looking at my paperwork and the guy, my contact information was I.L. Ford. And I'm like, who the hell has a first name I.L. Ford, you know? And then I'm looking at my paperwork and highlighted was installment loan Ford Thunderbird. I.L. Ford. Oh, man. And because you'd call, he'd be on vacation. He'd call, he'd be in a meeting. He'd be call, he'd be out for the day. And it always just give you the runaround. And it was it was a scam. It was, uh, yeah. and I didn't find out till years later. And by the time I found out, it was too late for the uh, lawsuit that they had going. And oh man, yep. But I ended up keeping my car. But I had well, to fight good. with it. Yeah, I actually told him to come get it one time because the, the engine had had gotten screwed up, so it didn't even run. And I'm still paying <laughs> car payments on it. And I literally, I called the guy up and he goes, we're going to come and get your car. I'm like, keys are in it. Take it. <laughs> I'll tell you where it's parked. <laughs> I was like, it's out on the street. I'll, I'll leave it unlocked. You can come get it. Let me get my yeah. shit out. <laughs> and uh, never took it. Never took it. I ended up paying it off finally. Um, then they, because uh, my mom and stepdad were co-signers on it and I paid it off. And then they told me that I still owed like $500 on it. And I'm like, I don't owe you nothing. I was like, I paid this car off. I've gone through loop hoops for you guys. I was like, this car is paid off. No, no, no. You stole us $500. I was like, I'm not paying it. I was like, I'm not giving you another penny. And I was like, I'm trying to get this settled. And um, my mom and, and they just called my mom and stepped that up. And then they threatened them with $1,100. And they went and got the money out of the bank and went and paid it the next day while I was fighting to try to get it taken care of. I'm like, if you would have just let me take care of this, it would have gotten taken care of. But all they did was have to scare them and they ran and took care of it. And I'm like, 20 some years later, I still deal with that. Yeah. My mom is, my mom and stepdad will still bring that up to this day. I was like, I've, I've got kids. I've paid every bill. I've lost everything and I've paid my bills. And uh, that car will still get brought up to this day. <laughs> Well, that's a parent's job. Never let you forget. I, I, I told it keeps my kids, you sharp. It keeps you sharp. <laughs> my, my youngest one back there, I give him crap all the time. I was like, you know, before you, daddy had hair. <laughs> he was like, I had hair at one point. <laughs> uh, he don't, he don't care. He's just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's got a pretty thick mane of hair back there. I saw it when he came Oh, he's, he's got his mom's hair. So do all my boys. Uh, yeah. man they got their mom's hair it's like it's just thick head of hair but you know what none of them can grow a beard for nothing really? i can grow i can grow i can be a wolf man in like a week <laughs> <laughs> i am currently a wolf man <laughs> yeah well it's it's bad as i got i'm one of them guys has to shave all the way up here oh wow oh man because it's i'm sitting there last night i'm i'm sitting in my bathroom my wife got one of the magnifying mirrors i'm like looking at it and i'm like oh man it's like, eh, 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 take the hair off. <laughs> can't grow here, here, but I can grow hair here. So <laughs> maybe you can pull some of this up through here. <laughs> I, can, I can be one where you part it. <laughs> there you go. A comb, a comb, comb a real comb, comb over it. A comb upper. <laughs> comb upper. I, I, I keep telling my wife, I'm just going to shave it all off and, and, uh, but I'm, I also, like I said earlier, I have OCD. And the one thing I, I hate, I despise is I hate people touching my hair. It just sends cold chills down my spine. Yeah. So I'm, I'm one of the guys is like, I don't like getting a haircut. And to have somebody shave my head will be have, like, have her do it. I, I need to. But even that. You remember, like, I used to have long hair too. Yeah. And uh, we, we were in a studio one day. And. 
because I used to work, I mean, I worked in a ponytail for so long. Mm -hmm. And one day I was in the bathroom and I was shaving and I was brushing my teeth. And I'm like, you know what? You really look like you've got short hair because your hair is pulled back. What difference would it make if you just cut it? And I went to the store and they cut it. And I took the, I took it and I, you know, I kept it. I, I gave some of it to Harris for Locks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I showed up to the studio and they were like, whoa, what did you do? It's like, I got tired of messing with it because it was, I mean, it was long. You remember how long it was? No, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess it was right about the same age that I kind of stopped going to bars and uh, listening to music um, and drinking real heavy. We're right about 28, 29 years old. Just kind of <sighs> <I'm never laughs> exhaled. <laughs> I I I, uh, I I stopped drinking, but I will still go. I still love music. I will I will go. Oh, I do too. I I want to I want to go find some good. Um, I can actually stand now, but I don't I don't I don't tempt it because mm -hmm. I I did a, a six bomb boards does a a, a live draw sketch thing. Mm -hmm. I did it last year, um, and I stood on concrete for three and a half hours and did a piece of artwork. And uh, it messed me up, and I haven't been back since. And I loved it; it was a great time. Mm -hmm. But I can't do it, and I I'm afraid. Like we've gone to concerts, Tina and I, um, but let's sit down. I mean, we went. We've seen Foo Fighters a couple of times. We went and saw Kings of Leon at Riverbend. We went and saw Billy Joel at the Coliseum. But I'm sitting down. You know, I can't. I can't stand. Me, um, it was. Uh... I went a while back and, and uh, went and seen uh, um, that was been a while back, a while back now, but uh, I was, went and seen Anthrax. Anthrax one of my favorite bands going back. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm sitting there and uh, my buddy's like, did you get in a pit? I'm like, oh, God, no. I'm in my 40s. I was like, man, I don't heal. I'm not going to get up. Oh, my God. We went, Chris and I went to Bogarts. This was probably eight or ten years ago and saw so wolf spain wolf mother wolf mother yeah yeah and uh, yeah. have you ever been you've been to bogarts right? yeah i've been to bogarts yeah a bunch of times yeah <laughs> we were standing on the edge of the of the edge of the pit and and i was just like and at, at that then my back was really screwed up i was in a lot of pain and uh, I just looked at Chris and we just both, you know, we've got that unimind. Mm -hmm. We can read each other. We can finish each other's sentences. And we just kind of looked at each other and just got this evil grin. And he's like, it effing sucks, doesn't it? We, we you know, because we both wanted to jump in because we would always jump in and go the other way. You know, it was going in a circle. We jump in and go the opposite way. <laughs> and uh, so what we did was we went to the bar, we got a drink and we went upstairs to the balcony. Mm -hmm. sat in chairs and we watched the concert from up there <laughs> yeah yeah we're old <laughs> well that's like um i'm sitting there I, I i i i hurt my back oh man um back in september and it took me forever to heal because i'd get i'd get where well, i start feeling good and I, i'd take a couple days off from the gym and i'd start feeling good and then i'd go back and then i would be miserable i couldn't walk um, and then finally one day I looked at my wife, I was like, I, she works at the doctor. I was like, get me in. And she's like, are you sure? I was like, get me in today. And I had a yeah. fist size knot sticking out of the lower left side of my back. It was the muscle was tensed up and twitching like this. Oh, Jesus. And the, the, uh, physician's assistant, she's like, well, let me see it. I pull it up and she's like, you're in pain right now. Right. And I went, yeah. She goes. I can see your back moving. She goes, it's just twitching. And she goes, we're going to, can, she, she, can, can you relax it? I'm like, no. I was like, I am relaxed. I was like, it, it won't relax enough. And so finally I had to get on, which I hate doing is uh, I had to get muscle relaxers and painkillers to let it calm oh, yeah. down. Um, and then it took me a week and then I was kind of back and then it came back. And I'm like, I, I finally, I looked at my buddy, Mark, cause he goes to the gym with me. I'm like, I'm done. I'm taking a week off. I'm not doing nothing. 
I didn't mow the yard. I didn't lift hardly anything heavy. I didn't go to the gym. And finally I was, I was back. But during that time I went and seen, um, I took my son, Joe, we went and seen uh, uh, King Crimson oh, yeah. in, in Huber. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm, I can't get comfortable in a seat. My yep. back just hurts. So I'm like, cause you know, they got them little tiny ass hard oh, plastic yeah. seats. Um, and I, I'm like, I'm I kind of walking around like this. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, um, my wife and I went and seen uh, Alanis Morissette in Garbage in Cincinnati at Riverbend. And so yet again, I'm on these little tiny ass seats. And it was it was m- miserable for and then now I'm I'm I've I've done my exercises, I've I've relaxed it. Um I I try to not be a stupid and lift something heavier than I need to. Yeah. Um because I think I because I picked up a couch and <laughs> not good. Yeah, it's one of the ones where you're like, I hated to say this, but I was probably the strongest out of everybody there. And everybody's trying to pick something like just I just grab it and I throw it in the back of a truck instead of everybody fighting with it because they're like, ah, just grab this side, grab this side. I'm like, no, just mm, mm, there it goes. <laughs> and uh, I needed to get my refrigerator out of because my like I said, my kids moved out. We had our their extra refrigerator upstairs. I finally moved that on Sunday because I was like, I'm not picking up a refrigerator. I'm not because I'm gonna be the one on the end trying to carry it up the steps and get it in. I'm like, let me be fine. When I tell you I can move it, I will move it. And then finally I was able to move it. <laughs> How did you move it? Did you use a strap or what? Um, we took it and I put it on a two-wheel cart. Okay. And uh, we rolled it to the house. I kind of got it down the steps real easy here. But when he got over to their house, their steps are kind of steep. And uh, I just kind of wedged it and grabbed a hold of one of the bars. And I would pick up like this. And I had my kids on either side, so they would pick up from the bottom, so I wasn't carrying all the weight. So, uh, and, and now I'm pretty good. So, you need out? Probably. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Well, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to take more of your time here because I just realized it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, um, that's cool. <laughs> hey, but, man, this was an absolute blast, man. I This was so much fun. Oh, it was. And, and, it, this is something we need to do again you know anytime yeah. you want to talk or whatever let me know and we'll get you on even if it's just you know talking about old con days and stuff like that and absolutely i would love to do that and yeah. uh, um maybe we can come up and do an in-store for roadkill rampage at some point yeah yeah just let me we'll, we'll figure it out and get it get it figured okay. out and go from there um and like i said i do appreciate you know like i said um 16 year old paul loved superior seven <laughs> and to think that that i love that book and you know met you guys at you know like an indie show or whatever and then years later you know meeting you through you know the comic book conventions in here and becoming friends and stuff like that it's it's to me that's very cool and and yeah. i appreciate it and uh it's you got you guys made a you know a kid from Ohio who didn't think that that was really possible for a kid <laughs> from Ohio to do. Um, yeah, it, it did it did do something. So I want you guys to know that. So that's cool. I, I appreciate that. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so all right, sir. Well, I'm gonna let you have a good night. And all right, I, buddy. I appreciate it. And tell Tina I said happy anniversary. I will. I'll let her know. All right, Thank buddy. you. Tell Tina go, I said hi too. Go take him to pee. <laughs> yes. You need to go outside? Go. <laughs> all right, buddy. Have a good one. We'll talk Thank soon. You. <laughs> and that is all for today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. You can find more of Rodney. We will set his information up at the end, at the credits. And um, we will remember the Group Therapy Podcast is brought to you by Are You Game, the best combo collectible shop in all of Pickle, Ohio, located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. Um, and you can watch me on my other show, Saturday Morning Serials, every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Or you can just watch it whenever. I don't care. So, or like this show, you can watch it whenever. Yeah. Um, so take care. And I will see you guys in the next episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Yeah.